under the aegis of TORCH, the Oxford Research Center in the Humanities. You can find more about the network in our dedicated website, and you can also add your email to our newsletter if you would like to keep updated with the network's activities. You will find both links in the chat box below. We welcome you today to a very special event, quite different from our previous ones, an event that is part of a long-standing engagement um, We welcome you today to a very special event, quite different from our previous ones, an event that is part of a long-standing engagement of our modern Greek studies departments with contemporary Greek artistic production, as well as with an understanding the Greek past that stems from the contemporary moment and its critical priority. The specific event has been organized also to respond to this year's celebration of the bicentennial of the Greek War of Independence, but aims to do this from a different perspective. We have asked a number of cultural producers from Greece, poets, novelists, composers, filmmakers, and visual artists to reflect on an apparently simple question. What Greece? A month ago, in our last event, we discussed with Professor Stathis Gurguris about the concept of the nation and more specifically on the Greek dream nation ideal, which led to the establishment of the Greek state 200 years ago. Today, we want to approach the signifier Greece from a different stance. We did not ask what Greece is, but rather, where does Greece stand today, 200 years since its independence? Which representations of Greece are still dominant or overcome or eclipsed or contested even? What does Greece mean to each of us? We did not want to limit the creativity of the artists involved in this process. We only limited the time they had to prepare it, two weeks, and we asked for a video that would last one to three minutes. As for the format and the content, it was all up to each contributor. What we are about to show you is an extraordinary combination of reactions, which will surprise some, while others will recognize their own voice and sensibility. For me personally, working at this project as Exenos Philelinas has been a most incredibly interesting experience. Growing up with the canonical images of Greek archaeological sites and whitewashed Cycladic villages, I somehow inherited a carefully concocted representation of Greece that highlights the appealing and, let's say, sellable aspect of a country that then I found out is much more complicated and has many more layers to its historical and cultural heritage. In my years of working in the modern Greek studies field, the idea of Greece has become a quest. It has become let's say an attempt to disentangle the clean image I inherited in my childhood. Today's event therefore contributes greatly to such disentangling process as the contributors lay bare the many shades of the word Greece. It's many inherent contradictions even, not only for the Xenos like me, but also for the many Greeks who at this critical time in history are asking the same open-ended question, what Greece? As you will see, the image of Greece is projected in many different ways in these videos' contributions. Some pose it as a question, others look at it as a problematic answer. Through their lenses, Greece is also a place of belonging or even a topos of trauma. Many, actually many more than we have thought, see Greece as a concept not to identify with, but rather to disidentify from, reaching at times the level of outright hate. There are great differences, huge differences in the videos, as many as there were between us receiving those videos and discussing them between us. Each video touched us differently, often realized responses by artists or writers who, who are located in Greece are marked by anger, sometimes even rage, while contributions by those outside Greece may express a more positive attitude towards the idea of Greece. And then again, others, to the question what Greece, responded with humor, satire, and nostalgia, or with even more open questions. However, all videos, we hope you will agree, are there in conversation with each other and ready to open a discussion. A discussion we will have with the contributors and all of you after the screen of the videos, which will start now in a few moments. Before hitting the play button, on behalf of the whole network, I would like to thank all the amazing artists who took part in this project with incredible enthusiasm. Many thanks also to Periklis Duvitsas for helping us putting together the videos 
and to Torch, in particular to Ambar Khalidi, for the invaluable support we received. Last but not least, we thank our other partners, the subfaculty of Byzantine and Modern Greek at the University of Oxford, the Department of Modern Greek at the University of Amsterdam, and the Ekaterina Laskaridis Foundation. Right, I think we are now ready to screen what breeze. Enjoy. What Greece? Τι ήταν η Ελλάδα? Ποια Ελλάδα θέλουμε? Ποια ελευθερία? Ποια μνήμη? Ποια χώρα? Ποια αξιοπρέπεια? Ποια αλήθεια θέλουμε για την Ελλάδα? What the hell is Greece? Οι λαοί στείνουν αγάλματα για να θυμούνται τις νίκες. Και με τις ήτες, πιο πολύ σήμερα κινδυνεύουμε από τις νίκες ή τις ήτες του παρελθόντος. Η αλήθεια ενός λαού είναι μόνο οι νίκες. Δεν θα έπρεπε να θυμόμαστε τα λάθη για να μην τα ξανακάνουμε. Μήπως θα έπρεπε να βρούμε τρόπο να δούμε την αλήθεια μας. Μήπως θα έπρεπε να στείλουμε αγάλματα και για τα λάθη μας. Όμως έτσι είναι οι άνθρωποι. Η αλήθεια σχεδόν πάντα μας διαφέρει. Στο graphic novel μου «Η μάχη της πλατείας» που ασχολείται με τον αγώνα ανεξαρτησίας της Ελλάδας το 1821, κεντρική φιγούρα είναι ο πιο γνωστός σήμερα ο πλατηγός της Επανάστασης, ο Θεόδωρος Κολοκοτρώνης. Έτσι λοιπόν, όταν ο Θεόδωρος ήταν πια γέρος στην Αθήνα, Έβγαλε στο πίστιά του ένα σπυρί για να μάθει πόσο μεγάλο ήταν, φώναξε ένα φίλο να το δει. Και αυτός του είπε «Είναι σαν ρεβίθου». Φωνάζει άλλον, τον ρωτά και αυτός του είπε «Είναι σαν καρύδι». Ένας τρίτος του είπε «Είναι σαν αυγό». Τότε ο Κολοκοτρώνης γύρισε σκεπτικός και του είπε «Είναι πραγματικά περίεργο». Από το κεφάλι μέχρι τον κόλο μου και δεν μπορώ να μάθω την αλήθεια. Greece is a body, a body of the Aegean, a body broken by austerity, of empires, of a body of song, islands that break too, in a dispersal of myths and people, diasporic, also Homeric, like the pavements of Athens, broken, textured, its Doric columns fissured, becoming something else and more than themselves. Like this peninsula, there is nothing more alive than what fissures, fragments and maps, and the mappings in and around this peninsula continue to connect continents. A corridor like its city's streets, moving between possibility, restless, stay, Restless, stay see the eye of the storm that sees and seethes.
I remember you driving in the mountains, on steep roads, bending into hairpin turns. I am slightly dizzy. Your voice fills the car like old spring snow. There is a town next to a lake, clear as a mirror, where you return to find everything you left behind, because it wasn't enough. I know exactly what wasn't enough, what was left out, what you used to hold on to. If I look back, my gaze slides to the end of the route that floats like a ribbon. And then I see you on the balcony. You are silent, like the future. I pass by the blonde children, the wife, the little country house, the Greek dream for which you gave your lives. I walk decisively towards you. My feet bleed as if I were walking on snow. I cover your eyes with my hands and hug you. I am ready to become all this old spring snow. It's very simple. We don't know how to love each other. You are silent. I know that if you could, you would return to your childhood village long before the Greek dream. I know it because I look at you through the eye of the talisman, through the eye of an animal. You keep silent, like a secret, folding into itself. You shouldn't have left anything behind. You should only have kept the secret. Even now, you can go up to the little house. The animal inside you, like the eye of the talisman, can guide you. If you get there, you will be alone. If you get there, stay there. It's not too late, and this isn't anymore the dream for which you gave your life. It is a dream you carry up the mountain, where once again you become no one. Returning, you are back in your village, where you prayed to become someone. Returning, I'm back at the car, where I prayed I was your son. Now your voice doesn't fill the car like old spring snow. We are silent like the future.
Ελλάδα είναι σωτήρης από την Αλβανία που μένει στο ισόγειο δεξιά μιας πολυκατοικίας στα Πατήσια και πετάει τους λογαριασμούς. Ελλάδα είναι ο Έλληνας ή ο Αλβανός που μένει σε κάποιον όροφο μιας πολυκατοικίας στα Πατήσια και καρφώνει τον σωτήρη που μένει στο ισόγειο δεξιά ως αυτόν που πετάει τους λογαριασμούς γράφοντας το ισόγειο με εψιλογιώτα και τα δύο ή. Ελλάδα είναι οι λογαριασμοί. Αυτή που πέταξε ο Σωτήρης και αυτή που δεν πέταξε γιατί του διέφυγαν. Σωτήρη, γιατί πετάς τους λογαριασμούς. Με τους λογαριασμούς έχουμε κάτι να περιμένουμε. Πότε θα έρθει το ρεύμα, το νερό, το τηλέφωνο, το αέριο, η τράπεζα, το ίντερνετ, η εφορία. Και μια υποχρέωση. Να τους πληρώσουμε. Άσε που έχουν πάνω τους και το όνομά μας τυπωμένο. Απόδειξη πως υπάρχουμε. Σωτήρη τώρα που πέταξες τους λογαριασμούς. Σωτήρη τώρα τι θα κάνουμε χωρίς λογαριασμούς. Διώξε με μάνα, διώξε με. Πατρίδα μου σε αγαπώ, έστω και με το στανιό. Πατρίδα μου σε θέλω και ας μην έχεις μέλλον. Πατρίδα μου σε σκέφτομαι αφού δεν σε επισκέφτομαι. Σαν άσουνα η μάνα μου που άλλαζε στην πάνα μου. Πατρίδα σου φωνάζω Μαζί σου θέλω να ζω. Τα ροδομαγουλάκια σου, ποιος τα φυλάει αν λείψω. Τα μέλη σου τα αρμονικά, ποιος τα βάλε στο γύψο. Και το γλυκό σου το κορμί, ποιος κόντινε στο ύψο. Με φαγιδόλια ξενιτιά και ας με ταΐζει με λεφτά. Διψάω τα νερά γλυφά. Μιλάω γράμματα λυψά, πατρίδα σε ρωτάω, πού τα ρόδα, πού τα γύψα, πού τα ναγλυφά. Πατρίδα μου σε αγαπώ ας είναι και χωρίς σκοπό, κι όσο πονάω στον κοκό, βρε κι όσο πονάω για κοκό, δε θα γυρίζω όμως θα πω, πω πω, πω πω, ως αγαπώ. Yeah.
I've lost my formula. 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 Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? Hello world, this is not another written monument, this is our transient oral manifesto. We explicitly declare that we abhor permanence, that we detest inertia, that we downrightly condemn uniformity and integration. We Greeks of Greek origin and Greek habitation, united we stand in our firm determination. Rest assured, I mind you, we shall not bomb the monuments, nor promote their reproducible visualization. We do not consider material destruction or kit banality as the road to our salvation. We will neither procreate to increase hybridity or bastardize, if you will, the nation. We henceforth proclaim the abolition of gravity, the end to our physical figuration. Renouncing on the easing of lockdown, confined in our houses, we proceed to our total digitalization. From Parchin Scalpel Rock. Legacy. For example, the Kemvriana still rages through these islands as if clotting were a vaccine against capitalism's hemorrhaging. Pollution decimates your limestone climatology, trends expressed as mass entropy in the economy. And rain's acid washes a whisper from Aphrodite's marble lips. Ven el piso tipotar. Therefore, vume tiputa, ime lefteros. The Vrikolagas of Athens marks Varkiza's disagreements, blotting out bloody signatures with British overtures. And Churchill grits his teeth and sweats other people's blood with the new spade work, digging up dictators to replace dictators. You conclude. Sulfur truly is the most important element for dissolving mammalian life on Earth. Paying special attention to the great social, historical, mythical, economical, yada, 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 economic necessity, blah, 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 austerity. Like many important cultural heritage monuments. You exist in a sulfur dioxide data nexus, uncontainable. Hermes guides my quicksilver sprint through Greece's vaults, leaving a death-shaped streak in the Eurobank still wet cement. For nationhoods, a nasty business. There's never a golden dawn, but Ariston men either for removing tougher stains. Note to self, if I doppelgang myself from my identity papers, I'll have someone to visit museums with. And you'll forget that future time when the marble statue's faces will be washed as blank and painless as the corpses.
Hell Service Αθηνών Λαμίας 4.43 ξημέρωμα Ώρα μέσω όρο της αυτοκτονίας Ανά την ψυχολογική φίλιό μας Είμαστε ένα πούλμαν νύχτα ακόμη Με δέκα πελάτες νοματέους Όλοι ακινητοποιημένοι μέσα σε μια δανική ταχύτητα Ελλάδος. Όταν στη μέση ενός κάποιου πουθενά περνούμε σύμφωνα δίπλα από ένα λιόμενο κυρτό που κάτι για σέρβις έλεγε με φώτα νέων μπλε φτηνά και με πιο πάνω ένα επίσης νέον χέλ να αστράφτει με μακάβρια το A και το S της κατάληξης σβισμένα. Και ούτε που τρομοπέζαν καθόλου, ούτε λιγάκι. Ε, τότε και οι δέκα πελάτες νοματέοι προμηθείς, λιόμενοι έφνης όλοι μας, ιστερικά σε γέλια. Ως που πάει όλο πιο πέρα, πίσω πέρα το λιόμενο και προχωρούμε ασφαλής σιγά σιγά κι εμείς εγκύτερα στον προορισμό του ο καθένας. Άλλη μία μαζική αυτοκτονία απεφεύχθη.
Să nu frapă ni froni și e clișe de și... Este plac ca e banul cu pămâni și făie și pe șoamă. Και δεν σου έχει δοθεί. Δεν είναι ο τόπος σου. Δεν μπορώ να καταλάβω το έδαφος, ούτε να το κατανοήσω. Ο ψυχρός αέρας που το σαρώνει μου παίρνει τη μιλιά. Δεν μπορώ παρά να αλλάζω θέσεις πάνω στο έδαφος. Με αυτόν τον τρόπο επιμένω να στέκομαι εκεί. Δεν υπάρχει για μένα ακινησία, ούτε βάθος. Το βάθος του εδάφους είναι το έδαφος. Δεν είναι τόπος. Πώς να τοποθετηθώ. Ο τόπος είναι γνώση ορίων. Το όριο είναι το ενδιάμεσο. Το ενδιάμεσο από τι. Μήπως το όριο είμαι εγώ. Τότε μπορώ ίσως να εφεύρω την τοπικότητά μου. Εδώ αναμένω κάτι να συμβεί. Είμαι στο μέσο της απόστασης από το τίποτα στο γεγονός. Ο τόπος μου είναι ανασφαλής. Είμαι ένα πεδίο σύλληψη, μια παγίδα, μια κειμένουσα δυναμική. Μια δυναμική αναγνώριση. Αλλά γίνομαι εκείνο που συλλαμβάνω και έτσι αναγκάζομαι να μετακινηθώ και να στήσω την παγίδα μου αλλού. Στο έδαφο είμαι ξένο. Είμαι αυτό που υποδέχεται στο παρόν αυτό που δεν ήταν εδώ πριν. Υποδέχεται το ακατανόητο ω ένα είδο γνώση. Αυτό είναι ήδη μια πράξη. Ξεμάτιασμα Στην κρεμάλα Να προσπαθεί να ακουμπήσει τα πόδια στο έδαφος Ίσως να τα κατάφερνε Αλλά χρόνια πριν κάποιος είχε την προνοητικότητα να κόψει τα δάχτυλα Τα νύχια έπεσαν στο πάτωμα και κύλησαν σαν μπύλες Η κοιλιά ύποπτα φουσκωμένη Έχει μόλις φάει αλλά σε παρακαλάει για τροφή κάτω από το λευκό πέπλο που φόρεσαν οι δικοί τη για να καλύψουν τα αμαρτήματά τη, είναι έτοιμη να σκάσει. Έχει φάει τα παιδιά, όλα, και α λένε. Και α λένε. Κανεί από όμως δεν επιβίωσε από το μακελιό τη λεμαργία. Φτω. Φαλοκλητορίδε σε αναταραχή, γευόταν τα μέλη των μωρών ένα προ ένα, 
εξαφάνιζε τα ίχνη τους από το αρχαίο μαρμάρινο πάτωμα. Έγλυφε, έγλυφε, έγλυφε μέχρι να μην θυμίζει τίποτα πως κάποτε έφαγε. Αυτή την ιδιοτροπία με το πάτωμα την έχει χρόνια. Αυτό είναι το καμάρι. Πρέπει να είναι καθαρό. Πάση θέση. Αλλά η ανάσα μυρίζει ανθρώπινα απόβλητα. Ο τελευταίος σωτήρας καρφούσε τα μάτια με τις πιο ατσάλινες προκές του κόσμου. Όχι πάνω από δύο, φτάνουν δύο. Από τότε κατάφερε να τα κουνήσει μια φορά για τόσο λίγο που μοιάζουν νεκρά, αλλά δεν είναι. Βλέπουν, βλέπουν πολύ καλά, πολύ καλύτερα από αυτό τον χρυσοδάχτυλο κομπογιανίτη που τα κάρφωσε. Καλύτερα. Με μια ανεπαίσθητη κίνηση των ματιών, κατάφερε το ακατόρθωτο. Όταν όλα τα δάχτυλα του κόσμου έδειχναν, κοίτα, αυτό είναι το άλλο. Όταν έρθει η ώρα της κρίσης, θα βύχει, θα φτύνει, θα βαριανασένει και θα ξερνάει, θα μουρμουρήσει. War machine, nation for nation one. We share the same symptoms, yet we have no idea what is happening. Have you wondered whether any one of them asked how much for the whole thing? This Flaminus Martialis, brandishing spears and proceeding to bind all these bodies to an earth regulated by a death coming from elsewhere. Are bodies unimportant or inessential? yet available like broken arrows for your delectation. An eruption of swallows as the bodies are dragged on, full of holes. What is this subspecies that has convinced us of death as the befitting option? Yet there is something to be said about becoming nothing for the country. You become yourself when you wish to die, a constellation of wounds previously designed for the perfect bodies of history. Have you ever wondered whether any one of them asked how much for the whole thing? A language of circuitry and secrecy against the public? Yes. Grow sick, destroy the bodies of the nation from within, and move on. This machine of a state, unchanging in its elimination and destruction of the bodies, it does not be, see fit for survival. Was there a fair trial held for this? No. These unfit bodies cannot be the incarnation of this day. No, not the object faces collapsed on one side, unable to pronounce anything but vowels and incantations. The sounds leave the mouth like paralyzed feet dragged across gravel. We still trade tips on how to feel less unwell, as that is the only thing that binds us. That is until the moment before we fall again sick for months on end. And the seas surge asking, where are the good bodies producing kings on this land? Conserve, reserve, serve. Is there an end to this? Is there an end to all of this? Is this the end to all of this? Being the small animals that we are, griefs cannot be controlled or contained. Being the small animals that we are, desperately pleased with our surroundings, the terror grows like ivy across our fingertips. At least, as is di diluted in water is potable. This is not an evaluation of what sort of country you are, but rather an evaluation of the symptoms you describe. My daughter says to me, 
if you live for two more decades, then the water might stop running green every time you turn on the tap. Have you wondered when it was that one of them asked, how much for the whole thing? A note to those who believe that the revolution is an inevitable thing before the bodies break down again. Look, the cause is the nation. The bodies breaking down is the symptom. This is no revolving door, and the arrows are not signs. They really are the rocks, knives, and scissors game once used on our bodies. Or was that the Minotaur masturbating on our backs? His body that goes to the past. You see, we are not mythical enough. Oh, I know. This is how to pass the time. Uncloak the tumors. It was 1996 when Ulysses Savopoulos released the remix of Blue Reed's Perfect Day. I, at the age of 20 at the time, was appalled at the new idea. Little did I know. A few weeks ago, I went for a rare stroll through the National Garden of Athens. Suddenly, this verse came to my mind. Mera omorphi is papias taisa. A loose rendering of the phrase just a perfect day, feed animals in the zoo. You may remember, to my surprise, the two other songs by Savopoulos had been chosen as background music for uh, two events of current affairs. A TV broadcast for the General Secretariat for Civil Protection about the pandemic, and a promo video for the Greece 2021 Committee. Perhaps I shouldn't be that surprised. Savopoulos' lyrics create images of contemporary Greece, and uh, as most of the lyrics of Greek songs, they carry weight and sentiment, contradictions, and identification at the very end. The Greek language is a constant reminder of the past. It has its roots in an ancient language that I don't speak, to a, quote, glorious past, with which I feel no affinity. Language is words, and words, besides sounds and meaning, can trigger one's fantasy by creating images and, uh, by extension, a commonplace. When I left Greece about a, a decade ago in order to find a better job, I soon discovered that what I mostly missed was my language, a small but very precise language, which for me isn't just a means of expression, but it is the material with which I construct my literary universe. The Greek language sums up all the history, the ups and downs, the alterations, the mentality of my country. If I had no other option but to stay and work abroad, would I have felt a lack? Probably not, but... Feed animals in the zoo. This phrase alone echoes within me in Greek totally differently than in English. Yes, it is a snapshot, it's a common image for almost all of us, but only when I transfer it into my mother tongue does it get meaning, substance, becomes personal. The generic, animals, becomes specific, puppies, ducks. And this tiny shift, the language itself, in other words, gives meaning to an experience, interprets my world, and therefore constituting in that way an identity. What if Greece had no myths, no Sophocles, no Socrates, no democracy, no Independence Day, no beaches, no sun, no history, no Parthenon, no Zorbus, no Tsatsiki, no gods or god to pray. What if the world had no memory, no heritage to inherit, no Greece on its maps and only had one word left, sounding something like Greece and meaning nothing but an olive pit? Would you still be proud of speaking its language? A pit's language.
not a minstrel, you're made out of tinsel. I don't know what Erika six was like or Erika four. Now please, oh please, you open the door. Welcome everyone back. Um, unfortunately, I cannot turn my camera on for some reason. Apologies. That's okay, Claudio. You can take a minute to turn your camera on. Just to say thank you to every contributor um, we have had here, and also those who tried and didn't manage to send us uh, something. Um, I hope you will agree that uh, it was an ama amazing set, uh, really amazing set. I I've seen it a couple of times, three or four times already, and every time it brings me new questions. So uh, a huge thank you to all. Claudio, now you have your camera. So Yes, thank you so much. Sorry for the delay. Um, so yeah, thank you again, everyone, uh, for your contribution, a big round of applause for all of you. And I'm sure everyone watching us from YouTube will agree and will join in, 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 in this applause. Um, as, as we've all seen, uh, the, the variety of the contributions was impressive and absolutely moving to me, seeing how Greece can take so many different interpretations and meanings, and especially again, me, okay, I've been in, in the field of modern Greek studies for, for some years now, but seeing it from the, the, the foreign perspective, um, I am extremely surprised because probably coming from abroad, we would not expect such, uh, all these feelings altogether about this country that we all see from outside as this amazing, uh, amazing place to live with, with amazing weather, amazing beaches, you know, islands and, and, and whatever. Um, so, first of all, what I wanted to, to, to ask was to ask any of our contributors, I would like to, to start with, with, with the authors themselves, uh, I, want to, I would like to, 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 if any one of you would like to say a few words on how, what, what are your first reactions to this video? How did your, your work dialogues with others, have you seen any echo of your work in the others or, 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 or any contradictions with, with others' voices? I don't know if, if any one of you would like to begin. Anyone? Adrian, yeah, please, of course. Yeah, sure. Oh, it was really, it was really fantastic. Um, this is the second time I've seen it. I just thought what was so fabulous was that there is a resistance to any kind of totalizing narrative. And so, you know, while we get much more kind of uh, conventional narratives, particularly now uh, celebrating the bicentennial and so forth, I think everybody has done such a personal singular reading and together it just comes across as so very rich and 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 this idea of you know resistance and it's 54 years now since the junta and you know i think the narratives themselves resist any kind of um umbrella signifier beyond the word greece you know and how we all feel and live what that means yeah thank you all so much for that and for the organizers for their for their inspiration. 
Thank you very much, Adrian, for, 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 for your insight. Um, it, it is true that, uh, you know, yeah, I didn't mention it in the, in the introduction, but yeah, today is the 21st of April, of course, and um, it's, it's been 54 years now from the, from, from the coup um, of, of April 21st. So definitely this kind of choral and coming together, it, it, it works very well with, with, with this, especially in, in a time now where it, it feels like we're all, we're all getting, in a sense, I don't know, disconnected one another for some reason. Uh, but yeah, no, absolutely. And, and that, that, that was amazing also just to see everyone coming together in, in this occasion to kind of create this, this concert of, of voices on Greece. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we, this is a sort of a continuation of a debate that we've been having uh, for, 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 for a month now since, uh, since the, the, the bicentennial in, in March. Uh, and we had a discussion with, with Professor Ruhuris. I don't know if he, if he would like to uh, give his input as well. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I think- Sorry to, keep, no, to catch you off guard. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. It's not that I have a, yes, certainly prepared anything, but I have to say, the first thing I have to say is that these, these were, were just simply stunning. Uh, uh, every one of these things were, were just a, uh, brimming with ideas. I was just, you know, they're idea provoking at all levels, poetic, uh, visual, uh, musical. Um, that, that was my response. Was I was just receiving this incredibly inspiring, um, uh, artistically speaking, uh, inspiring uh, pieces. Um, the one, I don't, you know, I don't have anything to say that it would actually be... Um, that would be sort of secondary to these. And in some ways, I think that's very hard to do. One thing though, I was thinking about in, in terms of the project uh, that one might say, um, and certainly I've been sort of saying that I've been thinking about it for a long time, that it's ultimately um, um, the, to think about such matters, you know, uh, which tend to usually go under categories of history or philosophy or let's say theory is ultimately limited. That, that in fact, um, the most interesting, most provocative, again, thought provoking and otherwise provocative way to uh, uh, encounter uh, these, these uh, questions is really through, um, you know, a poetic response. And by poetic, I don't, of course, just mean poetry, uh, right, I mean, in the ancient sense, all of these, uh, you know, the elements, uh, the musical dimensions, the visual dimensions, cinematic ones, the performative ones, and of course, the, the poetry itself, um, that, you know, I mean, in a sense of, of uh, peace has been in the ancient sense. And that, I think, is what um, I, um, you know, that's what I received at, at the core uh, as sort of an immediate response. Uh, it's easy to, you know, theorize beyond these things to to uh, create secondary discourses. Uh, but in fact, uh, no matter what we say, however we think about these things abstractly, um, the most, you know, groundbreaking or incisive response is, in fact, uh, a poetic response. I would I would totally agree with you, uh, Stathi, because I was also thinking while you while, while you were talking that yeah definitely we can all uh, theorize from uh, about the idea of nation about the idea of, of of the of the state and whatever but then the state is made up of people and and artists like the like the ones that we have today here with us um, who contributed to this video uh, are probably a direct voice of of the people leaving the country, you know, from a direct experience, uh, like, you know, from, a, from an emotional rather side, rather than more a, a, more a mental and theorizing one. Dimitris, I see yeah. that you wanted yeah, to- Yeah, I wanted to interject here to also bring uh, a discussion that we had on the chat uh, while the video was playing. Um, some um, um, attendees, um, and I think with good reason, um, mentioned the fact that most videos um, referred to Athens produced a, a picture of Athens. I want to um, address a, perhaps a, a misunderstanding here. Um, certainly not all of the contributors uh, came from Athens or reside in Athens as we speak. 
Um, and that is uh, something that we took into account, even though you understand we invited many more people and the whole point was who was available and able to do something within two weeks. But actually, uh, there are so many uh, interconnections and um, um, uh, dialogues going that include people exactly placed outside Athens. It is a question though, why those of you who decided to reference pictures, most of you referenced pictures of Athens. And uh, it is, um, as we speak about uh, uh, what Greece, uh, we may need to also take into account um, the kind of visual representations of Greece and how these are mostly related to certain sites um, with most of them being in Athens. That was my my comment also bringing in a couple of questions from the chat. Thank you, yeah, of course, um, we're, we're welcoming all questions in the, in the chat box, I forgot to mention earlier. Um, please do submit your questions in, in the chat box below and uh, we will definitely uh, come back to them and so ask any questions you would like to, to our speakers. Um, I don't know if there is anyone, any other author would like to uh, say a few words about their own uh, response to the question what Greece and how their response uh, collaborates with the others that we've just seen. You know, there's, there's always this sense that if you guys don't speak, then <laughs> we will speak. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Dana. Uh, yes. I'm Danai. Sorry for my bad accent in English. I am used to speaking German the whole time, lately more often even than Greek. Anyway, thank you very much for the invitation. It was a very nice surprise. Uh, we had to create something very quickly, so Pavlina organized a creative team because uh, I currently reside in Switzerland. Pavlina is in Athens. Uh, so Pavlina wanted to use my poem, uh, Greek Dream, and uh, create a video that would actually depict some kind of uh, performance by a female body uh, that would uh, try to narrate the story of the poem, not just by reading it out loud, but also by performing a series of acrobatics and using all means possible for a performer. Uh, our video was actually shot in Athens. However, I, I think the background is irrelevant. Our main focus was on the body of the performer. I didn't grow up in Athens. Uh, however, all of us reside in Athens. <laughs> so our permanent addresses are in Athens right now, more or less. Uh, I am very happy uh, to meet you all here. Um, I think Pavlina's uh, idea and direction of the short video was very moving, at least for me. And I don't get moved very easily. And, uh, I was happy to collaborate with the girls working with the translation ideas about the video, the materials and everything. And I also enjoyed a lot watching all the videos today. They were really unique and uh, each one was telling a very interesting story for a country which has, which has built uh, so high social walls and none of us has uh, remained unheard by them. I was quick to speak also because I have an online class in a bit. I am the teacher, I can't skip it. Um, no, I wanted, as, as a member of the team that put this together, I wanted to comment a little bit uh, um, on uh, the fact that um, most of you um, are in groups already, have been working together. But one of the things that we wanted to showcase, and it has happened sometimes without us um, 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 knowing it was happening, was the, uh, uh, to, to bring people together and show this happening. Uh, I mean, another team, um, um, Anna Zaku, Marius, uh, uh, brought in a poem by yet a third poet. Um, 
um, people uh, got together in this sort of time. And I, I don't know whether um, this uh, has been, um, this, this willingness of us to, to collaborate has been supported by the quarantine, um, the quarantine and the recent um, sort of lockdowns, but it certainly uh, feels as if we need uh, to, to be connecting more and more. I wanted also um, to mention something else. This is also a project of self-translation. Uh, so many people got together to get others translating their texts. Um, people decided to read in English or read and uh, um, have uh, subtitles and all that. And we wanted to also bring this out um, because those questions bringing our discussions uh, happen in and around Greece um, to the fore sometimes is already engaging in a translation. Um, and this is something that uh, we think um, characterize this project. Um, I don't know if, uh, if Orfeas wants to say something. I see Orfea, you, you sometimes- Hi. Yeah. Hi. Um, thanks. Uh, th so thank you so much. I, I thought they were all amazing, um, the videos. And uh, thank you for organizing this, Dimitri and Maria, or Letzi and everyone. Um, what, what strikes me always is, you know, and this is another confirmation, is the plurality. You know, as someone said, you know, to, to, you know that it, I mean, uh, the struggle for us, I think, now is to turn Greece from, uh, uh, you know, the singular into the plural, you know, or, or start speaking, if possible, just of Greece's. <laughs> It's, it's in Greece, we use it more. We say Ielades, you know, but in, in, in English, we don't usually say Greases. You know, many Greases. And I, I think that's, that's what I take home from all of this. You know, this psifidoto is the mosaic. You know, it's made out of psifides. In Greek, psifides are like tesserae in English. It's, but psifos is the same root. It's like the little votes, huh? the, the votes. And, and the tesserae is the, sort of the same root in Greek. And... It's like we're all voting with with our feet, also to <laughs> the expression in English that we we want to be we want to be heard. And as you say, that for me the, the basic thing with language things, you know, language works of art is the translation. You know, that that's for me was the immediate thing. I love what Maria Fakin said. I've I jotted it down that the Greek language is a constant reminder of the past. But, but so is many other languages. I mean, you know, does it matter if it's like 1,000 years or 500 years? Um, but, but it's interesting that, for example, Solomos, you know, is the national poet. Um, he starts from Italian as the language he learns most of his stuff in. You know, it's almost his mother tongue. He's divided between Italian and, 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 and Greek. I bring it up because of uh, Claudio Ruscello also, because, you know, the, the, the hymn to liberty is our national hymn. And um, what I put on my video is Palamas's Olympic hymn for the, uh, the music was for the revival of the Olympic Games of 1896, you know, the ultimate example of exoticizing and remythologizing Greece. You now then let's get back to the Olympics and let's have them again in Greece, 1896 just after and before another great you know, Greek crisis and bankruptcy. You now, the, the framework is similar to now. So I had that in mind in using Palamas's words, which appear as subtitles in my video. But of course, I'm saying my own stuff, which comes back at the end as in translated you know, properly, let's say. But, but the music is by, uh, by, by Samaras, who's the composer at the time, 1896, the Olympic hymn. Well, the national, the hymn to liberty, which is a lot better poetry, I would argue, by Dionysius Solomos, our, let's say, national poet, has got, which I hadn't realized, an epigraph uh, from Dante, uh, dear Claudia, uh, which reads, I've jotted it down, Libertà va cercando che si cara come sa chi per lei la vita rifiuta, which means he seeketh liberty, which is so dear as knows he whose life um, for her refuses. Okay, so this is, uh, and then I, I started, this is at, at, at the opening of our national hymn, we have a, an Italian phrase, okay, in translation by Solomon. So our national hymn 
starts with a translation from the Italian. It's, it's incredible, you know. That's what you call, you know, transparent borders. That's, that's so modern in a way. The foundational poem for Greece is, starts with a foreign poem, you know, from the Divine Comedy. And the even more interesting thing, which I was discussing with Alicia Stallings, which is a, a poet, a, an American poet who lives in Greece, she, she told me, look, but this is from the opening of Purgatory, and Virgil there is speaking to Cato. And Cato, Caton, we say in Greek, uh, has refused when he's, he's dead you know, in the purgatory, but he has refused a potential death in the battlefield under Caesar, you know, defending Rome, let's say, as a nationalistic type of ideal. He has refused the death in the battlefield, opting for a suicide. Okay, he's in the other world as a suicide victim. So, so he opts for individual freedom rather than nationalistic freedom, let's say. So what you said about translation for me is really important because obviously lost in translation, I use the phrases for me, very important. Another reference for that poem was a uh, poet I loved dearly and who ended up living in Greece for some time is James Merrill, a more contemporary philhellene. And in, in that poem of his called Lost in Translation, it's got nothing to do with the film you know, by Sofia Coppola. She started to go on a bit. He, 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 in, in, that, in, in that poem, which is an amazing poem, it's, it's, it's part of the Divine Comedies, which relates to Dante also, is, is, a, is a book he brought out in, in 1976, James Merrill, American. He talks about Mademoiselle, his governess. Merrill was a, from a very rich family of Merrill Lynch, you know, the bankers in New York. And, and the fact that that governess had to hide her identity uh, because she was Germanization, and during the Second World War and after, that was frowned upon in New York, so she pretended she was French. So, so, so for me, uh, it, 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 it's all about pretending for us to be someone else, perhaps, because if, if we just stick to what we've learned, you know, and, and if an anniversary, as Chateaubriand said, I mean, I love this quote, is a return each anniversary, he said national anniversary, is a return to school. If we see it as always a return to school, we will just keep repeating this. And I think the national, uh, nationalistic freedom and so on, and the love of country, we say, okay, but it's, that's what I mean by uh, lost in translation. The poetry, not as what is lost in translation, but poetry as translating loss. So, Turn, turning loss into words. And, and what for me is the loss in the nationalistic ideal is, frankly, it has caused and still causes a loss of physical life, but also psychic life, you know, intellectual life. And, and, and I think in a way it's like a pauperizing, a, a, a desiccation of our imagination to just stick to the nation. And, and that's how I, I really like to just add one final thing as my thoughts under the poem I, I sort of performed, is I, I love the way Derek Walcott sort of puts it, because at the same time, I feel so tied to the Greek language. So he says, I just wanted to read you this, that, you know, from a far cry from Africa is a poem I love, he wrote, Derek Walcott being West Indies, from the West Indies, but brought up with the British language, he, he says, I who have cursed a drunken officer of British rule, how choose between this Africa and the English tongue I love? So, and, and I, I translate this struggle between the col colonized and the colon colonizing powers, you know, the British and the West Indians and so on, I translate as an, a, col a colonial type struggle inside of Greece. A and, I, and I feel like, uh, in a way, I would restate these lines by saying, how can I choose between this Greece, you know, now nationalistic Greece, Adrian mentioned the police state and so on, how can I choose between this Greece or the romanticized version of Greece, you know, the Shelley and Byronic, prototypical mythologized Greece? How can I choose between this Greece and the Greek tongue that I love? Betray them both, says Walcott, 
or give or give back what they give. Okay. It's, it's for me, it's a conundrum because I love the Greek language. It's what I've got. Okay. But I've got some English also, but it doesn't feel the same to me. It's not, well, about, facility. It's not about facility of speaking. It's about what moves you more. Anyway, uh, sorry. I, I said a lot. But... No, no. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm also keeping an eye on the chat, which uh, has um, given us a lot. Um, uh, of questions and also uh, provides a little bit of a, um, um, a constant uh, commentary. I know Alekos Lutzis wants to speak next, but um, in the chat, many people point um, to questions that we all face and need to be facing more, uh, representation, representativity, inclusion, um, uh, why there were no more um, kind of marginalized voices, and uh, indeed, as people say in the chat, this was a, a project put together kind of um, in a fast pace. Um, we did try um, to reach out to as many voices as possible. And there will be in the chat some, some links to further future events that actually may cover some of uh, the comments that I um, can see uh, there. However, there is also, before, uh, before I turn to Alekos Lundzis, there's also a comment uh, that I think needs addressing. Uh, Vasily Kicicopoulou says, I see a lot of self-reflection. Sorry, um, um, uh, I need to find this. Um, uh, a relatively common theme, she says, that jumped at me as these short pieces followed in another was hate and self-hate, uh, loathing and self-loathing. Am I misreading? Um, and um, I don't know, Aleko, if you could um, comment on that and if others could also comment on this. I will be bringing more comments from the chat as we go along. Yeah, good afternoon uh, from me also and a great thanks to, to the network for the opportunity and the, and the collage actually. I would like to, to comment on, the, on this because my, my uh, initial will was to comment on the on the first comment by Dimitris Panikolaou about the misrepresentation of rural Greece or of Salonika, for example. It's strange that in a calling about uh, what Greece in the 2000 years uh, of the modern state, again, the first comment in between us was about uh, misrepresentations of parts of the country or parts of the nation. And there was, in my opinion, in this very interesting collage, a courageous or a brave broken image, both uh, aesthetically and rhetorically. But if there was a lack in the videos, and that's uh, no doubt not a big surprise, was uh, a more nationalistic rhetoric, which actually is rather popular in Greece and hence the majority in any kind of community you could find the stratification in this. It's not, not very strange to think about uh, young or younger artists brought together that we would have a lack of, uh, of, a nationalistic, of a nationalistic rhetoric, which is now eminent in the whole country and, uh, and the politics applied. And I was thinking again, how interesting it was that for the last 12 or 15 years, Greece was rather depicted or presented or projected as a broken machine or at least a machine out of order and the most it was actually the most familiar prototype and for myself and I think also for Ares and Orpheus who participated and still participate in the ongoing work of, of the opera of the House of Commons. Nevertheless we were always thinking uh, Athens or Thessaloniki or Greece was as part of a broader picture as part of uh, dynamics and uh, social dynamics that are um, not decided elsewhere, but in any, in any case, we are uh, reciprocally being part of, of, of a larger project. And again, it is uh, interesting to think that the first divisions comes again on a local uh, stage when we're discussing all this. That, would be my, my first contribution. And I would like to listen to the others and maybe join you again. 
Thank you very much, Aleko. Um, I, I was looking now, sorry, at the, at the YouTube chat, and um, there is someone who's just asking uh, for Erofili Kokali to, to kind of speak a bit more about her project. Uh, and indeed, I would actually be very interested to hear her voice uh, in, in, in this conversation. Uh, I think that's the right moment to, to, to talk with her as well. And then after Erofili, uh, Christos Christopoulos is next. Uh, good evening from uh, Kipseli, Athens, to everyone. Thank you for having me. I want to thank Dimitris, uh, Claudio, Yorgos Evgenios, Christina, and Maria for all the help. Uh, I'm not sure if I have many things to say about my project, but uh, I, am, I am available for questions. I would like to share a feeling, more than everything, uh, which is a feeling I had from the first time I saw the, the video of the projects. And this feeling is, I, I felt like I had a visit to, a, to, to an asylum where a national trauma is trying to be healed uh, by dancing, by speaking, by singing, by sexting, by, by everything. I also would like to mention that I really love the project named uh, 1967. I'm sorry, but I don't remember the name uh, of the person who created it. Maybe you could help me. Aphrodite Nicolaidou. It was the third, the third video we saw. I would, I would like to send a big heart to her uh, because uh, I noticed that there was uh, a trans feminine figure, which makes it kind of more historical. Besides that, uh, besides the theme about what Greece. And I would like to say something about the comment that Dimitris mentioned before about hate. There is a song, there is a Greek song from a group uh, named Tripes. Uh, this song uh, was uh, out in 1996. And uh, it, has, uh, it has a lyric which said, uh, Patrida mu ine ki perisotero apo alo. In English, my homeland is where I felt hatred and I was hated more than everywhere else. Uh, so maybe this is, uh, this is a common feeling between everyone. I want to thank everybody for the, for the interest, but I really don't have something really specific to say about my project, but I'm still available for questions, uh, but I would like them to be more, uh, more certain about what they want to know about it. Thank you again. Thank you again. Thank you so much for, for this. Um, Christos Chrysopoulos, I saw that you wanted to say something, yeah? Hi, Chris, you have a How problem? Yes. Okay. Is it yeah. better now? Yeah, it is. Right. Right. Well, just a couple of observations, really, more than interpretations. Uh, first, everything to me appeared as very familiar. Uh, I mean, both uh, the landscape and at the same time, I think all the videos, because I know most of the people who participated, um, I mean, reflect what they're doing in the, you know, the rest of their, the rest of their work. Um, also, I recognized a lot of um, uh, you know, familiar uh, places in my experience, both uh, um, you know, representations of, uh, of Athens mainly, but also a lot of uh, the way that people were looking at their own experience. Uh, now, just because you asked about the, the video that um, uh, I made, it's practically what I, I mean, it's, it's, it's part of my daily life. I mean, my response to, uh, to, to the invitation was, I mean, what, what is Greece is what uh, I'm, I do when I, where, you know, when I live here. And I take regular uh, rides with my bike and I live in Kipsali, I like riding along Philly Street on uh, the opposite direction so I can see the incoming traffic. And then I had headphones and I listened to these tracks that I make, which is 
like you know, very short, very simple repetitive tracks of music that I sent to my friends. And this is basically what, uh, what everything was. Um, but I think overall, I mean, I really appreciated how much you know, I recognized uh, friends and what they do, and then having this underlying, uh, uh, you know, uh, understanding of uh, how much even though I mean I understand this, uh, um, I I understand this point about self-loathing or or being critical, but at the same time I think there is a strong urge to appropriate uh, Greece, to appropriate Athens, to appropriate the place uh, where you live. So uh, these are just a few of the uh, comments I had to make. I mean, sorry if it wasn't all very coherent. <laughs> Thank you all. No, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, Theodoros Hiotis, uh, I see that you raised your hand, yeah? Okay, sorry, can you hear me now? Okay, wow. hi. Um, thank you for, you know, for Dimitri. Thank you to Dimitris and Maria and uh, Christina and everyone the Modern Greek Studies Now team for inviting me. Yeah, it was, you know, quite, um, you know, it was quite a timely, invitation uh, because I've been working on something about this. I mean, and it, it's quite interesting because we had the discussion as we began about translation and um, the piece I, uh, I, you know, I, I put together is about, um, it talks about a lot about able nationalism. I, I work a lot on, uh, um, you know, uh, inspired by, um, um, what just be what just be pure talks about homo nationalism and able nationalism, especially in this piece about you know the able bodies that create um, the world, the the Greek world. But what um, I find really interesting about what I found really interesting about this um, the discuss how the discussion began was about translation because we began talking about translation, and um, I've been thinking a lot. I mean, I've I've translated Greek poets into English uh, a lot, um, but um, I find it quite interesting to see, you know, how translation can be this deformation zone. Um, uh, po poets Joel McSweeney and Johannes Goranson, who are, you know, he's, he's American and he's uh, 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 Swedish American poet. They've talked a lot about it a lot, and they they keep saying that, you know. Um, this idea how translation is not exactly, you know, it's actually not this, um, you know, verbatim um, transcription, but more like a wound that makes impossible connections between languages and how it unsettles ideas we have about literature, how it unsettles those, all those productive ideas about literature. So um, it is quite interesting to sort of think about, for me at least, in this context, how we translate this idea of Greece, how we sort of go forwards and sort of talk about how, you know, the precarity, the precarious idea of Greece, how that is translated and how that is um, passed down uh, against all these neoliberal narratives of Greece as this, economy that you know you know there's this current regime that is trying to pass this idea that you know we are things are happening we're moving along we're, you know and this is not my experience um especially in this you know during these times of the plague but um it, it's really interesting i mean it's really interesting to sort of try and uh and consider how these things happen and you know in my video i mean all the visuals were basically me taking pictures uh, that had to do with what is going on right now in, the, in Greece and then, um, you know, feeding them into an algorithm and neural networks and then creating all these new pictures and um, trying figuring out what is the narrative we're actually telling ourselves and what is the narrative we want to tell other people about ourselves. So, yes, thank you for the invite and you know, for uh, the opportunity to think along these lines. I'm following the chat a lot. And I have to say that uh, also perhaps because some people may not have um, um, uh, joined us from the beginning or read 
uh, our text, uh, they do point out that today is the 21st of April, 2021. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, make it clear to everyone that this was our starting point. This was, this was in our invitation to every panelist to take this into account. And we believe it has been taken into account um, in many ways. And as people will rewatch the videos, they will find perhaps uh, subtle uh, references to today's um, uh, political and social events, as well as the last um, 10 years Greece has gone through. The network uh, Greek Studies Now is all about seeing the past from this specific uh, contemporary um, env um, environment and moment. And also to say that this is part uh, of a series of events. Uh, so people who want to perhaps see other events, uh, the previous one uh, was called Dream Nation. Uh, the next ones in May um, are an event on homophobia on the 17th and then on the 24th, an event called We Have Never Been Racist, Rethinking Race in Greece. Uh, so in that sense, we are trying to engage in many ways without forcing um, uh, discussions. We, we try to, 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 to sort of um, see how discussions reverberate and take them from a local context to a transnational as, as global context as we can. Uh, one thing that Theodoris um, 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 Hjorti said uh, was how he took images from actual current events and put them in code. And then how do you represent that? One other thing that came from his and other um, uh, Erofili's presentation and others was the body. Um, the uh, Pavlina Marvin, the nice Hyozu uh, video uh, was very much centered on the body. Um, and I think uh, a, um, a, a video that was mentioned, Aphrodite Nicolaidus 1967, actually started from today's day and then brought in um, an unknown archive, a family archive of videos and the story that was not told but shown. Um, it was an archive, you know, how, what do you do with this archive? What do you do with this date in 67, in 2021, 21st of April? I don't know, Aphrodite, if you could offer a comment on this. Yes, thank you, first of all, all of you for uh, watching and uh, for organizing this. Uh, well, actually, there's no archive until you ask a question. So. For me, it was important that uh, even though I had this material in my house for like 15 years, and I've seen it many times, I was kind of blind in front of it. I was blind uh, in front of the date. Uh, I suppose it is 1967. If it's not 67, it might be 68, but it's around there. And I was blind in front of this final scene where a person is dressed as a woman. Uh, haven't, I mean, I've seen it, but I was blind in front of it. So when uh, you ask the question, this question, this awkward question about what Greece, uh, suddenly I had a question to ask my material. And that question that is not always, it's, it's not well put, let's say, could be which Greece or what the hell, as you said, Greece or different other kind of questions. What Greece, for me, uh, unlocked this uh, chronotope, let's say, of 1967, and unlocked uh, uh, several kind of events and um, memories that uh, recollect and remember my family and my friend's family. And uh, this is how it happened. It's, uh, it's something that started with a question. And I think that there's no archive if there's no question. The question is that makes you see what you have. And I find it extremely interesting to see how a question in the present 
makes us go back to these archives, hidden archives, because that's what they are. We, we, we've always had them in front of our eyes and, and we can only see them now from this new perspective. Uh, this, the last scene from your, from your video, Aphrodite, was absolutely stunning to me. And what, what, what I found extremely interesting as well was the, the, the moment of um, homo tension in a sense with, with, the, with, with the man touching the leg of of, of this man in a dress uh, while this other man in a dress is playing with the child. It, it was a very touching moment for me. Um, I see uh, some a lot of hands raised. Um, Neni Panuria? If you are here and you would like to say something. You need to uh, take your camera on and then uh, your microphone. We can hear you now, but we cannot see you. Yes, because it tells me that you have to you have to start my we have to start my video. Okay, sorry about that. Um, let me um, then okay. let's move, let's go to Vasiliki Petsa who wanted also to speak, and then we will sort this out immediately. Sorry about that. Okay. It's okay. Uh, hello to everyone, and thanks for for the invitation. Um, I will go back to the hate and self hate. Uh, thing and I just wanted to point out that I think that it is really hard trying to be both left-wing and patriotic in a sense it's really hard following two different identifications um, because um, if we think uh, if we take a left-wing identity to mean something like critical it's really hard in Greece to sustain um, both a patriotic and a critical stance. Um, it's really hard being non-nationalist and being patriotic in a sense that because you love your country, you kind of hate it in a sense that you take a critical distance from it, um, from the hegemonic narratives that construct it um, as, as, as a, a point of, uh, of identification. Um, and also, in a sense, if you are critical, if you do uh, employ a left-wing stance of critique, uh, and if you do point out that there are some power imbalances, both within Greece and on an international level, then you cannot get away from some kind of self-loathing, because you do realize that Greece or you either realize or you have to accept in a sense that Greece um, is not what it used to be or that Greece um, is kind of um, subordinate to some other like uh, great powers. Um, it's not easy. Um, and I I even if you do uh, accuse uh, the great powers, if you do employ a kind of populist narrative, you still kind of hate yourself for being in such a position. Um, that's my, like, I, I don't have anything else to say. Thanks again for the invitation. No, thank you, really. Um, it was it was a very powerful message, the one that we've seen on your video. So thank you for, for, for going uh, back to it and, and kind of um, explain it a bit, a bit better. Um, is uh, Nanny Panuria's video working now? Yeah, oh yeah, I see her here. Okay, Nanny, yes. It is, hi, thank you. Um, so first of all, I, I, I know that uh, this is a huge repetition, but this was absolutely stunning. The, all the videos, all the presentations, uh, the conceptualization of the project, the way that it was carried out, it was just absolutely, Stunning. Um, I would like to um, go back. I have to make a, a disclosure. I am speaking at this moment, not during this time, but at this very moment, I'm speaking as a descendant of Kolokotronis, and I want to go back to the to the first video on Kolokotronis, and I want to um, pay particular attention to uh, what I think. Kolokotronis is telling us that we are 
probably not willing to um, to see and and um, negotiate. And when we do see and negotiate it, we end up uh, seeing it and negotiating it. Uh, by thinking that we are engaging in self-hatred. So, Kolokotroni says, Απ' το κεφάλι μου στον κόλο μου, δεν μπορώ να δω την αλήθεια. And I think that what he's actually saying right there is that, uh, I mean, he's not conflating, but he's just uh, putting together a description of the body, of a particular body, with the... Uh, uh, a truth, right? An alithia that, that exists, which someone, anyone outside of him can see, right? It is self-evident. You ask someone to give you a description and you expect that if you ask three people to give you a description of one thing, you know, they're going to come somehow, they're looking at the same thing, they're going to come somehow to some um, um, close, description of it, right? So, so what, um, what we are not looking, I mean, what we're, what we're seeing in that piece uh, by, by Kolkotronis is the fact that um, uh, Greece was never what it used to be, right? Greece has always been something that has always been made up, constructed, uh, uh, relayed, its, its understanding, its being has been relayed by uh, anyone who was actually looking at it, right? And it's not that, it's not, it's not the paradigm of the elephant, right? Where, where five, five blind men are actually catching a different part of the elephant and they are having a different uh, understanding of it. We have three different men, three different people, three different uh, 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 subjectivities looking at exactly the same thing, giving, giving it a, a, a totally different uh, uh, volume and, and, and size, right? So I think that this is something that we have been uh, living with um, from, from, the very, from the very beginning. Um, so I think that another thing that goes in there, which, um, which Tercetis, um, of course, leaves um, uh, not unexamined, but, but um, yeah, uh, not he doesn't uh, spend much time with it, is that what Kolokotronis is actually asking for right there is an understanding of, uh, of, the, of the connectivity between description and critique. Right, so critique as in not, not criticism, but, but a critical approach to the event, right? The, the taking a stance of understanding what this thing is and employing reason and, and, and critical thought to, uh, to describe it, right? Which is precisely what we have not, we, and this is a very large we, right? We have not been um, able to, to, to sustain um, as an engagement in Greece outside of uh, very few and very specific um, corners of, um, of, of our uh, collective thought. I don't want to take up any, any more time. Um, this was fantastic. Thank you all so very much for doing this. Thank you very much, Nemi. Thank you. Uh, Maria Bolezzi? Yeah, sure. Thanks, uh, Claudio, and thanks again to everyone for uh, for uh, sending us these amazing contributions. I I have a question that I guess is addressed to um, all of you, but um, um, uh, has come up implicitly in some of your responses, and it has to do with the question of representation, but also the the tr question of translation. I guess that comes up that came up in the discussion in different guises. Also with English being in fact the lingua franca of this event and the contributions because those who were not in English were had to be translated, right? So, and some, some of the contributions were uh, made as a collective effort, some uh, less so perhaps, and some uh, seem to speak from a, from a we, from a collective. 
explicit or implicit um, that relates to Greece through identification or disidentification or in some other uh, fashion. And others are um, speaking from an eye, from the eye that doesn't necessarily uh, speak as a collective. What I was wondering is um, if you can say, if anyone wants to say a few things of, about the kind of relation between, between the I and the we that you might have negotiated in your contribution, or in other words, basically, who did you feel you were speaking with, not for, but with, and whom were you addressing? And was that a different we that you were addressing from the one that you speak with? Um, yeah. I don't know if anyone wants to... And shall I also add some questions that relate to these that come from the chat? And I also know that after me, Gerli Madem Lee also wants to address a common question. And then in the meantime, all panelists, please reflect who wants to uh, go next. There are two questions that stand out and we haven't addressed. There's a question that says that, uh, yes, uh, all this trauma, how can you uh, negotiate it by being open? I mean, we sometimes think of trauma as something that makes you close in. How can this work? How can trauma work by being so open, by being so shared? Uh, and then um, there is a question by Panos Tathatos, uh, which I will read out and somehow reflects or relates or continues Maria Boletti's discussion. Panos Tathatos says, a discussion about Greece in 21, 21st century wouldn't necessarily entail a closer look to Greece's material and imaginative position in a globalized world. And what does this mean for us as subjectivities? Um, so that's um, another question from the chat. Um, I don't know if Geli Madamli wants to add two questions. <laughs> Your microphone. I may as well add one. I'm not sure if we have the time, uh, but I can be brief uh, up to you so that you can wrap it up. Uh, so thanks so much for this, um, this wonderful session actually and this very simulating body of work. I, I also have a question that might um, be addressed to all of you uh, really, because as I was watching the, the videos, I kept thinking of the question of the future, right? Of course, it also has to do with the context of the Bicentennial on April 21st and maybe the prompt itself. But, um, but what we also saw in uh, not only in the, in the subject matters itself, but also the visual language is this oscillation between the past and the present and the legacies of all these power narratives of the past. So I think I would, I would be interested to listening to your thoughts on the idea of the discourse on futurity as a counter narrative to uh, the obsession of the country with uh, the past, this nationalistic discourse. And since uh, I, I find it interesting that this prompt, what Greece uh, is usually completed with something that uh, brings back the reiterations of the past. But it can, it may as well be a prompt for okay, what what's the desire here? What is the imaginary? And I'm referring to uh, Mr. Grigoris's talk a while ago. So I hope this is not interpreted as an exit cue, the gesture towards the future. I'm just <laughs> really curious on what's uh, what's what's your thought. What are your thoughts on that? Thank you, Kelly. These are, yeah, the, all these questions that we have collected are, are, are really intense. Um, so I will give, I uh, will leave the mic to Oresis Papayoano. I see that he would like to say a few words uh, while all the others think oh, of no, some. Your piece, Oresti, was the one that was kind of uh, offering an exit, or rather, yes, actually, yeah. an exit and an entry, open the door. Um, Thank you for the invitation and for the really beautiful artworks. I'm glad that it worked well as a fade out, the piece. Um, I would like to say a few words about this area and how it refers to what Greece. I also sensed a really strong dialogue when I, when I saw some scenes of Athens. And then also in our piece, we used an Athens which becomes digitalized 
and uh, and fades out in this way. Um, so I think that I would refer also to the question that was posed at the beginning: Why Athens? In my humble opinion, um, we saw some some works uh, today that really aspire with the beauty of the kitsch in, in some way, from a block of flats in Patricia to the Phillies Road to some uh, uh, gas stations, abandoned gas stations, to the, this kind of contradiction of the archetypical, maybe, and the modern, the kitsch. And I would say that Greece is a society of contradictions, not only in the social aspect, but also in the visual aspect. We have uh, nationalism and pride, especially on this year, the 200, 200 years after the revolution, against strong criticism. Uh, you talked about uh, self-hatred and um, all the movements. And I think Athens is a boiling cauldron where all of this is really, really vibrant. So it also expresses and it, it gives birth to this kind of uh, artistic expression. Um, so I would like to stand a bit to this contradiction be uh, between archetype and um, between original and the copy, between archetype and uh, the kitsch in a way, which is also the main, one of the main themes of the opera me and uh, Alekos and Orpheus are working on at the moment. Uh, and watching Athens itself, I think if we bring this motif to the present, uh, wouldn't the image of the Parthenon surrounded by the modern Athenian architecture be only the image itself be suitable for this motif? And um, I would also say that this vision analogy, I would pose the question if it can be expanded and apply to the society itself, a society of contradictions, uh, classical and modern. Um, and I think that these kind of images are emblazoned in a way also in not only uh, uh, in the artistic movement, but also the social subconscious in, the way, in a way. And uh, this is what I would like to comment and also to, to pose this kind of question. Thank you so much, Arestis. Thank you. It, it was, uh, your piece was definitely um, a, a great um, closing, but at the same time, it, it, it opens up a lot. And actually, you picked up also some questions from, from, from the YouTube chat about, uh, about the Athens, um, the, the Athenocentric image that we've, that apparently we had in, in, in that we had, not apparently, we had it in, in our video. Um, I want, I, there was a question for Erofili on the YouTube chat that I saw. Um, and there is also yes, a person who wants to go next, sorry to... Um, no, no, that's fine. They will, who again? We'll go to Erofili afterwards. Yeah, sorry. absolutely. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, thanks a lot for the invitation. This is a very great pleasure. Uh, I would like to make a comment uh, about process and methodology because I agree with what has been said in the beginning that this is like a very helpful way of uh, talking about um, like uh, talking about big narratives and imagine or uh, dreaming or uh, using the body, using the impulse, using intuition, using um, and I think uh, it's much uh, well needed. Um, and I think I, I'm, I'm going to address the other question about uh, to whom you were addressing while you were making you were making the video. And I think there was a relief with the uh, from my from my experience. There was a relief from the idea that this video is addressing a wider range of uh, community that is outside the. Um, nation state let's say and it's not so so much specifically confined or restricted to the greek borders let's say again so there was some kind of relief and easiness and smoothness that i can be uh free and wide and uh not having necessarily to make a point or a statement and i think i think this must be kind of kind of a methodological uh, aim kind of like I feel that was my feeling and need that 
we need more to work towards that kind of a process, like a dream, creative, dream-like, creative-like, intuitive-like, embodied-like way of talking about these things. This is what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, there was this question for Erofili. Uh, they were asking about uh, the spells that you that you were mentioning on 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 the poem. Um, I know that what what you've recited in the video is actually a shorter version of the full poem. Um, but the the question was if you could talk more about uh, why you chose this mystical language to represent a psychological condition. Um, first of all, I want to say that uh, I started writing these words uh, more than 10 years ago when um, uh, I felt uh, like uh, in a very, very dark uh, personal and general uh, situation. Th then it was because of the economical crisis as we all might remember. Uh, at, the, at the time that I saw the title of, uh, of the event, I remembered that spell uh, that uh, I haven't seen for, uh, for the recent years. I had it somewhere in my laptop, but instantly I thought about that spell. So I, I went through that spell again and I felt like um, uh, I, I felt like it's 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 like something very very dark happening again, or something very dark never stopped from happening. I'm not sure about it. So uh, at at the video today we saw a, a small part from from that spell breaking. Um, and um, it, it was something like uh, it was something like uh, a, a description of uh, of uh, of a monstrous creature, so so much monstrous as a medusa, which 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 can still be defeated, but it can be hardly defeated. It can die, but it can die hard. This is what uh, this spell breaking is trying to fight. This is what is trying to break. Thank you. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, Alexis Ravisoglu, would you like to add a few words? Hello, everybody, and um, many thanks for this. These are uh, wonderful videos, and I, I really like the kind of fracturedness of the whole um, project and the, the sense that, you know, there is uh, Greece can only be on you know, it's a It's a very precarious ground we are dealing with, it, as, as we saw in one video. I have um, one thing to say, I wanted to say, and that's a sort of mix of, a, of, of an observation and a, and a comment. And something that's also, and I apologize if maybe it has already come up um, a lot in the in the YouTube chat, in the separate YouTube chat, and that has been addressed there. But I think that wasn't really taken up um, explicitly here in 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 the chat, and that I maybe uh, want to address again in order not to let you off the hook as 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 as, as easily as um, otherwise would have happened. And that's the question of the you know representation. The where where is this uh, coming from? Who's speaking? And I was watching this um, without now being too kind of you know falling into identitarian kind of categories. I was I was partly watching this as a sort of you know half Greek. Uh, from the diaspora and also as a kind of quasi scholar of Greek working in, in German studies. And, and, and as I was watching the videos, I was kind of um, thinking about uh, similar things, you know, cultural events, cultural representations that had been going on in Germany. And most notably, um, uh, when I was watching the video um, that, that said, you know, we hate, we hate Greek, uh, we, we hate Greece. I was thinking of a, of a recent initiative in, in Germany and um, that was called um, uh, Eure, 
eure Heimat ist unser Albtraum. Our, uh, you know, your, your homeland is our nightmare, which was a book um, that basically had the words uh, homeland and nightmare in bold letters. So the, the cover actually said homeland or Heimat and nightmare. And, and sort of had a sort of negative vision of this, this notion, this kind of contested notion of Heimat and homeland in, in Germany. There was a similar initiative called um, Deintegrate Yourselves. And what was notable about all these initiatives in Germany and these, these kind of, you know, very prominent kind of contributions to discussions about, you know, belonging, about national identity, et cetera, et cetera, was that they were coming very much from um, voices of, those who sometimes in Germany I ironically refer to as, you know, Bio-Deutsche, Bio-Germans or non-organic Germans, i.e. like, you know, white Germans with white German people name, um, with people who, you know, sometimes I refer to as people with a Migrationshintergrund or my, migration background. Um, and this was notably not the case here in this event, as far as I can see, again, without falling into easily identitarian categories. So I was wondering, is this something that is just kind of an, an accidental omission? Is it something that was due to the kind of organization, the way that the events was, or, was organized? I don't think to say, you know, there will be something, an event later on that deals with, um, say, you know, we have always been racist and um, is, is a good enough answer because in a way it does compartmentalize the issue uh, and, and, and sort of makes it a separate issue, makes racism and, you know, uh, uh, these sort of migrant identities, whether they've been long established or, you know, part of recent waves of migration, a sort of separate issue. So again, it is an, a genuine question I'm having. It's not supposed to be a, a point of critique. Is that something do you think there's a kind of con something different in the German situation and the Greek situation or something that sort of so socially, historically, politically explains why in an event of this kind, um, uh, you know, these voices uh, are, are, not, are not that prominent, have not been featured in, in, a, in a very prominent way? Um, yeah, that is my common sense question. Many thanks. Thank you so much, Alexis. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, I see now the the time, and we are we need to approach the end of the of today's event. I, I know that Dimitris would like to uh, give some closing remarks. I uh, sorry. I think Maria um, will also. Oh, yeah. um, Maria, do you want to? Um, I I could just mention rounding up the. Um, uh, the chat, uh, you will find there and there will stay various comments, uh, comments that um, we may not share. Um, most of us here, it was obvious where each and everyone uh, stood and it is very obvious where uh, the uh, this network stands in terms of its address of certain issues and its ways of trying to engage as much as possible with as many voices from Greece, about Greece, within um, outside um, Greece. Uh, so we did try to address a lot of um, a lot of the comments that came in. Uh, it stays though with us this interest in language, in language thought of in an open um, way, with sites, with deconstructing belonging, with belonging as well, uh, with anti-nationalist feelings, especially on a day like that, and how these can be productive in a way of addressing one's belonging, um, with gender, with the body, uh, again, with belonging and talking and creating together. Maria. I, I also, sorry, just to, uh, because I remember, are uh, there many people here who did not ask to speak and we, we are um, afraid we don't have more time. Uh, but at least we saw, we, we saw contributors um, here in the chat as well. That was it for me. Yeah, and, and most of all, uh, they have spoken through their works. So that's, uh, that's more than enough of a treat for all of us. Um, just to, I don't have much to add, just to say that uh, uh, we've seen here in the discussion, but also for, especially in the videos, a, a wide range of, of um, attitudes uh, that 
trigger all kinds of affective responses to viewers, but they also come from, from very strong um, affects as well, uh, and, and also translate it into feelings of anger. We discussed anger, hatred, um, pain, nostalgia, trauma, hope, uh, but these are not separate from also, um, or necessarily separate from uh, different or alternative modes of thinking, right? So uh, if, if artistic contributions trigger affects, trigger feelings, these are also translatable in many cases as modes of thinking and modes of th being in, in, uh, in Greece or uh, ways of answering that question that we posed. Um, and this also speaks perhaps uh, implicitly to the question of futurity that uh, Geli asked before. So uh, what I mean to say is that even forms of anger or negation or refusal to identify can in many cases be seen as steps or phases uh, in articulating, in a process of art finding, tracing alternative spaces of being, of being Greek or of being in the many Greeces that we've seen unravel uh, tonight through these videos. So um, um, thank you all uh, so much for, uh, for this wonderful work that you shared with us. And uh, I, uh, I just want to give the final word to Claudio, uh, who, was, who is hosting this event so that he can close the event. Thank you all again. Thank you so much, Maria and Dimitris, for these final remarks. And thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, all the contributors, for their amazing participation to this project that we that we suggested. And it, it, it has truly been inspiring. And I see also from other comments coming in how, again, inspiring all this was. Uh, there is a, we feel that there is a conversation here to be going and to to, to be kept going on. Uh, we will definitely leave, uh, this the, the, This event has been um, recorded, so you will find it on, on YouTube here. Uh, also the videos that we have streamed uh, today will be available, uh, I think on YouTube again. Uh, we will definitely let you know uh, where you can find it. You will definitely find it on our website of the network, GreekStudiesNow.org. Uh, we invite you all to visit our web page and to, again, to uh, register to our newsletter so that you can keep updated for our uh, future events. Um, our next event is going to be um, in more or less in a month time at the end of um, May. Uh, as we've been mentioning uh, it during the conversation, it's going to, we're going to explore uh, the issues of race and, and um, racism in, in Greece. So that's definitely going to be a very, very interesting uh, talk to, to, to listen to. Uh, thank you all again very much. And I hope I'll see you all next month. Thank you.